And if we move on to Premier League governance, it sounds like the Premier League set to introduce new voting on FFP rules that might get rid of the £105 million limit at the moment. What are the details of this new ruling, Pete? And when is it likely to come into play if it does happen? Yeah, I think obviously a lot of clubs would like uh, the governance to change in that one. As we've previously talked in other uh, podcasts, that £105 million limit now is probably way too low when you look at some of the transfer fees that are being spent on players. Chelsea broke the British transfer record twice uh, with some of their signings of over £100 million. So it just doesn't add up now to have such a small limit of £105 million when players are moving for more than that. Declan Rice, we've had moved. Moises Casado have moved for over £100 million as well. So I think clubs will be hoping that these new uh, regulations will come into effect ahead of the summer transfer window. I'm not sure it'll happen that quickly and for that to come into effect but yeah I think all clubs especially the likes of Newcastle who obviously have money to spend um, but weren't able due to the FFP constraints they'll be hoping that these uh, limits are increased and lifted to allow them to go out and spend money because Eddie Howe was desperately looking to strengthen in January but because of the regulations and the possible punishments uh, Newcastle weren't able to do that so yeah I think sign of the times now we need to see that limit uh, increased. And Keith, what do you think the potential benefits or drawbacks are removing the £105 million limit? I mean, we've spoken about Newcastle and joked on here, the richest club in the world not being able to spend. I mean, it was it was quite ironic, really, going into this window. Well, I'm not a great fan of, you know, stopping owners from putting money into squads and clubs. Um, I think there has to be some sort of uh, limit, but I don't. I think we're way too tight. It's funny how Pete talks about the £105 million and then correlates it with transfer spending. The Everton sanction was based basically on interest payments for building a new stadium, nothing to do with players in, in, in the whole reason. But certainly, I think the, 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 the way it's moving towards the UEFA model of a proportion of turnover is probably some sort of a, a nod in the right way. But I would still think we should be inviting owners and people to spend. At the end of the day, it's still only 11 against 11. And we've only, you know, we've seen many number of times, all of us have seen how highly paid squads get beaten by a better team on the day. And so, you know, I just don't see a real need for us to uh, to do this. None of the clubs we're talking about in the Premier League are facing bankruptcy as far as I can see. Uh, and I don't think, you know, if they've got the rich owners and the, if there's a bonding system in place, then maybe we can do that. But I'm a bigger fan of opening it up a little bit further. Do you think that it, then the Premier League becomes more attractive to investors if we do get rid of the £105 million limit? Well, it's funny. The, the NFL franchises went through the roof in terms of valuation when there was a salary cap. And that was what they wanted to have. And the American owners, we've always talked about the American owners in the Premier League being able to get enough votes together to try and get some sort of salary cap. That's the cost base that runs away. Uh, it isn't so much the transfer spending, it's more the, 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 the wages and the salaries. So if there was, I know it's been talked about many times, but there's got to be some sort of formula um, that would then limit the transfers if you had a salary cap. That's the way I think, Rand, you should be thinking about it. Um, so that's what will increase the valuation and get better investment into the Premier League. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I guess, again, it remains to be seen how this kind of this sort of plays out. And Pete, in terms of the current stance on an independent regulator, I know Keith and I have discussed on a previous episode. What's your thought on bringing in an independent regulator to make sure that actually we are staying on top of clubs finances? Yeah, obviously, it's been talked about a long time. Gary Neville has been a big uh supporter of this feeling that an independent regulator is needed to be brought in to help English football. Obviously, we've seen so many horror stories of clubs who have obviously chased the dream, spent big, then found themselves dropping down the legs and even some have gone out of business as well, which has been very sad to see. But I think obviously the Premier League clubs, because of the TV money that's involved, there's so much money there that obviously they'll probably find themselves okay in that respect. Uh, but yeah, I think if you're looking lower down the food order of clubs as well, I think a regulator is needed to be brought in as well. But there'll be lots of opposition to it, especially from the Premier League clubs who, who don't really want it. Um, and the, the owners of some of these big clubs don't want it either in case it uh, impacts on their plans as well. So I think it's just going to be an ongoing debate um, probably for quite a long time now. And I don't see it changing anytime soon because of the opposition to it. It's a real stalemate. I mean, Keith, what do you make of an independent regulator? 
Well, you'd say that the uh, the behaviour of the Premier League recently would indicate that we need one. Uh, but my worries about an independent regulator is that will then be politically led by the government of the day that comes in. Um, I mean, there are certain agendas about fan involvement in club ownership that I think are completely wrong. And uh, it's those sort of things that if they start going down political avenues, that could be the problem. Uh, but certainly, I think there needs to be some sort of commissioner or a watchdog uh at least to try and make sure that we're not getting into the mess that we seem to be leading in right now yeah i, th I think that's right and i think by the same accord as well pete you'd assume too that if we are to remove the 105 million pound limit it actually might feel like previous transfer windows where there is big spending we might not have that concern about clubs really not being able to spend very much or doing loan to buys or loan deals because they are so nervous to bring in players if they're breaking the rules yeah, it obviously opens the door again for uh, more transactions involving clubs if there is no limit on what they can spend. Uh, obviously, fans love transfer windows. They love to see their players uh, or their clubs linked with big name players and big name signings as well. As long as it's uh, the clubs do know how to balance their books and don't leave themselves in trouble, I think we definitely have to increase that limit as well. We don't want to see clubs just throwing money at it and then finding themselves in all sorts of financial trouble further down the line as i said i've seen clubs and about look at the way reading are going right now which is really sad to see we've had wigan in previous years as well so a lot of it comes down to uh owners as well and how much committed they are to the club i think as i said the premier league is slightly different because it's such a huge institution with so much money swirling around it that the, these clubs probably don't find themselves in such situations but yeah obviously you don't want it to be the wild wild west with uh, you can spend as much as you want in that respect either we want a level playing field as best as we can because we just don't want uh, certain clubs who've got uh unrivaled uh, wealth just to be dominating as they have been in recent years as well so a level playing field for all is what uh, most fans would ask for but yeah as you said we'd, we would definitely need that limit increase because it's definitely not uh, attainable now i think for clubs to be uh, 105 million pound uh, limit over three years i don't think that's uh, sustainable no I, I think you're spot on you've just watched a segment from football insiders brand new podcast the inside track with me lewis Pierce, alongside the guests on the show thanks very much for tuning in please do give the video a like comment your thoughts on the topic and feel free to share on your social media pages if you want to listen to the full podcast episode click the link in the description below keep your eyes peeled for plenty more content and exclusives here on the inside track